Hey everyone, there's a very interesting game between Fabio Caruana and Ian the Pomnishi in the Sinkfield Cup yesterday, in the second round. In this game, Fabio was playing white and Ian was playing black. And the game started with a knight off with e4, c5, knight to f3, d6. d4, captures, captures, and knight to f6. Fabio played knight c3, defending the e4 pawn, and a6 is played by black h3 by white, and now e5, hitting the knight on d4. The knight moves to knight b3, and bishop to e7. And here Fabio played a very interesting move. He launches his g-pawn up the board, very alpha zero style with g4 here, preparing the move g5. Here the engines give h6 as the best move, stopping g5 from being played. And play could continue with bishop g2, and now black can play b5. Whites can play a3 to stop b4, and play continues with bishop to e6 and both sides castle. Here in this variation white could play f4. And black is supposed to continue knight fd7. And after f5 bishop c4 hitting the rook. The rook can move to f2. Black can play bishop h4. And after rook d2 bishop e7. It's actually given as a very equal position now. So black defends this d6 pawn. And the game is given by stockfish 10 as dead equal. So this is what could have happened if black played h6 here. But the pawn the sheet decided to go for the complications and play b5 instead. And this of course allows Fabio now to play g5, hitting the knight on f6. The knight obviously retreats back to d7. And white has a few moves to play here. In the game Fabio actually played h4, but bishop e3 here was also an option. Stopping queen b6 ideas, and maybe even knight b6. So basically white's just given up the pawn on g5 here. So if black captures on g5, after bishop captures, queen captures, white can finish up the variation with queen takes d6, and both sides have equal pawns. But white has a much more superior position. For instance, if queen f6, white can castle queen side. And for instance here, black's got the option of taking f2 or taking the queen on d6. Queen f2 is suicide due to knight to d5, threatening may on with queen e7, and also knight to c7 ideas. So instead of taking on f2 in this position, black has to swap queens. If white recaptures, black can play knight to f6, but white has a nice advantage out of this with bishop to g2, and bishop e6 and knight to a5, where white is now given as slightly better. This is just due to development and the fact that I think white is going to double rooks on the d file and have a very strong position. But in this position though, Fabio didn't play bishop to e3. He defended his pawn on g5 with h4. And upon this she played knight to b6. Maybe preparing knight c4 ideas. Or even bishop to e6 first and then knight c4. So Caruana played bishop to e3. Black played bishop e6. And Caruana actually took the knight on b6 with the bishop, and queen takes b6 is played. So Caruana continued his rapid development with queen f3, preparing to castle queenside. And the pawn that she now hits white, plays b4, hitting the knight on c3. The knight now jumps to d5, and even though black has the bishop pair, he decides that the knight on d5 is just too pesky, and takes it. So after recaptures, this actually helps black's d6 pawn, because it's now covered by this d5 pawn. So after castling, white's rook can't sack his d6 pawn anymore. Knight d7 is played by black, just developing, maybe preparing knight c5. Castle's queen side is played by Caruana, and a5 is now played by black. So this is a very double-edged position. Black's going to attack white's queen side, and of course white will attack black's king side. In this position, bishop h3 was given as the best move by the engine. Attacking the knight on d7. If queen c7, the recommendation is to capture this knight. After captures, play knight d2 and prepare knight to e4 with a blockade in the centre. And this is what the computers suggest. So I'm guessing they like black's attack very much. So, for the computer to suggest bishop h3 here, it would suggest to me that black has a slight edge. I think after king b1, which was played by Caruana, Black does have a slight advantage. A4 was played by Napomnishi, hitting the knight on b3. It retreats to d2. 
and will probably reroute itself now to e4 or c4. Black plays knight c5 though, a great outpost for the knight, preparing the move b3. And white just seems a bit under pressure here. Caruana calmly plays bishop to d3, though, developing another piece. And just eyeing up this h7 pawn on black's kingside. But I think now black played the best move, b3, just crashing into white's position. C takes b3 is played, a takes b3. And of course white can't recapture this b3 pawn, it's just too risky, so Caruana plays a3, just blocking up the position. And the pawn that she now plays rook to a4. So just getting more squares for control, controlling this e4 and c4 square and has the potential actually to move to f4 at some point if they wish. So it'd be a great defensive move for black. Caruana plays knight e4 in this position. Black captures, the bishop recaptures, and black now calmly castles into this position. But I think here Caruana missed a good move. He could have played rook d3 here, so hitting this b3 pawn twice. If black defends with rook b8, white can play rook c1. After g6, white can now play rook c to c3, so has three pieces battering up against this b3 pawn now. Black can of course play queen a5, maybe preparing queen e1 check at the ideal moment. But white can now calmly play queen e3. After a move like h6, white can just win a pawn with rook takes b3. And if captures, captures, it seems white is just a clear pawn up here. Don't get me wrong, I think this is a really tricky endgame for both sides. But white definitely does have the advantage now. So definitely I think white could have opted for rook d3 here. Obviously it's very hard to see. But in the game, Caruana actually played rook h g1. So I think he's preparing h5 and g6 himself. And um, attack black's position. Queen a7 was played by Nepomnishi. Maybe preparing a rook sack on a3. And it's also quite a good defensive move. Just guarding any pawns on this 7th rank. Caruana continued with h5, preparing g6. So black is pretty much forced to play g6 themselves and blockade this attack. Finally Caruana does play rook to d3, threatening rook takes b3. If we just go back a second, I don't think white can take this pawn, just due to rook takes e4 here. So rook d3 is played. The pawn that she plays rook to b8, guarding the pawn on b3. So again, if white captures this pawn on b3, the rook is still eyeing up this bishop. So we can't do that yet. So Caruana takes on g6, black recaptures, and Caruana now plays queen to g2. And this is where things get really interesting. As I was watching this game live, the comments section went crazy. And this is because the computer now suggested a rook sack, followed by a really incredible move that I don't think 99.9% .9 of grandmasters would ever see. And this is just a good demonstration of a computer move. I think if you told the pawn that you hear that black's in a one position, he would have taken the pawn on a3, but it's really hard to calculate. In the game, the pawn that she actually played bishop to f8, a very safe move, just guarding black's position with bishop g7 ideas. But incredibly here, black can actually take on a3 with the rook. After rook takes a3, if the pawn recaptures, Black can now play queen takes a3, and I think most players would see this position. But what we wouldn't see is maybe after f3, should the queen on the second rank is now defending everything. And this is where I think most players' calculation would go up to. But now there's a very incredible move that the computer suggests, and that is queen to a7, amazingly. And the point is that now this queen hits this rook on g1. So this stops white's queen from moving away from this position, and there's nothing to stop now black playing b2 and queen to a1. So for instance, if white now plays rook to d1, black can just play b2. And now he's threatening queen to a1 check and will get a queen with b1. The best move given by the engine here is actually just queen takes b2, followed by rook takes b2, king takes b2, and bishop takes g5. So white has two rooks for the queen, but he's actually two pawns down. And I think white's position is losing here just because f5 is available. And it'll kick the bishop off e4. And stockfish actually gives minus six to black in this position. So that's a really significant advantage. So after b2, 
in this position. If white plays, let's say, rook to c3 in this position, black can now play queen to a1, and after king c2, black can get a queen with check. So white's forced to recapture. And actually here, black can take with the rook. The point being that rook b2 and rook c1 are available, and white's just gonna lose more material. So if king d2, the variation goes rook d1. And after king e2, rook e1, king d3 to protect the rook on c3, queen d1 check, and now black is just winning. The point being that after a move like queen d2, amazingly black can play rook e3 here with check. So the king's forced to take, and then just bishop takes g5, king d3 and queen takes d2. And white's just busted in this position. In this position, after king d3, Again with check, even if white goes to c4, there's queen to a4 check, and after king d3, the only move. So black can actually take on g5 with the bishop, sacking a piece. And now black's preparing moves like queen d4 check, and just will win the game with ease. So if white takes on g5, there's a nice variation with queen d4 check, king c2, rook e2, and after king b3, Queen b6 check, king a4, queen a7, king b4, and rook b2. If blocks, then queen c5, king a4, rook a2, rook a3, and checkmate. And that all stems from this position with rook takes a3. So it's no wonder upon that she didn't see this idea. And I don't think he would have missed rook takes a3. I think he would have just missed this queen a7 idea right here. It's very hard to see, and as I say, I think 99.9% .9 of Grandmasters wouldn't even be able to see this move. And whilst I was watching this game live, I think most viewers agreed as well that most players wouldn't see this Queen A7 idea. So it just highlights the difference between engines and top players. So in the game, the Pomishi played Bishop to F8, a very solid move. F3 is played by Caruana, so the Queen's now protecting everything on the second rank. Rook c4 is played, rook h1, queen c7, and Caruana plays queen h2, threatening mate on h8. But now bishop g7 just covers it. And of course, a move like queen h7 is just futile, just due to king f8, and there's no way to follow this up. So after bishop g7, queen e2 is played, bishop f8, queen h2, bishop g7, queen e2, bishop f8, queen h7, and bishop g7, so they just three-folded repetition, and both players agreed on the draw. But this game definitely was the highlight of the round, and it's just positions like these that highlight the richness in chess. Without an engine, I don't doubt we would have seen this move for many years to come. But anyway, I thought this was a quite incredible game with an incredible move, and anyway, I hope you enjoyed the analysis of this video. Please drop me a like, comment, or subscribe to the channel if you want to watch more chess videos in the future. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for now.